Since the dawn of the internet age, record companies have been drilling into the heads of anybody who would listen that file sharing and digital piracy are a curse on the industry that has led to its collapse, at least in comparison to the behemoth it was before. While there may be some merit to that statement, assuming you choose to ignore that record companies utterly failed to get with the times in an effort to prop up an ancient business model, the fact is that not all recording artists would agree with it. In fact, there are some who have encouraged their fans to steal their music instead of letting their money fall into the pockets of their own record companies. I am Kirsten Rhea from What Culture Music, and these are 10 musicians who encouraged you to steal music. Number 10. I Shine's Fake FBI Warning We've all seen the many warnings that record companies and similar institutions like to put out to tell people how wrong it is to download music or other media for free, with many in the US carrying the FBI anti-piracy warning seal that is often accompanied by the ominous warning that those caught pirating the album could face a fine of $250,000 plus a jail term of up to five years. It seems more than a little extreme, which was probably the thinking of the rock band I Shine as well. Instead of including the standard FBI warning on all of their albums, the band instead chose to create their own, which parodies the harshness of the potential sentence for pirating. FBI warning! Illegal distribution is a criminal offence punishable by death. Just kidding, make sure all of your friends get a copy. Number 9. Dead Kennedys in God We Trust EP Long before all of these newfangled MP3s were causing record labels to lose their collective minds, the villain of the day was cassette tapes. Anybody with a two-tape deck could simply copy an entire album from one tape to another blank tape and hand it out to their friends. The Dead Kennedys took full advantage of that with the In God We Trust EP by leaving the second side of the cassette release completely blank, instead of filling it with B-sides. Their message? Home taping is killing record industry profits. We left this side blank so you can help. Help. Number 8. Iron Maiden tells bootleggers to send copies to their friends there are some who would draw a distinction between the act of bootlegging a live performance that will never be sold in stores and actually copying a physical record. Thankfully for Iron Maiden fans, bootlegging seems to be a practice that Bruce Dickinson approves of. During a show in Gothenburg, which was actually airing live in a number of Scandinavian countries, Dickinson encouraged any bootleggers in the crowd to spread the word when he said, If you're watching this and you're bootlegging it, make sure you send it to all of your friends, not just the Swedish ones. While it's not necessarily telling people to go out and download the band's records, the message still seems to resonate with the crowd who claim that bootlegging and pirating simply serve to get a musician more recognition. Number 7. Icebreaker includes blank CDs with album there's probably not a lot of people who have heard of the German metal band Icebreaker, but the band has been going strong since 2003. While the band isn't particularly outspoken when it comes to piracy of their music, they did pull a stunt when they released their self-titled album back in 2004 that suggests that they are more than happy for fans to copy their music. The first 5,000 copies of that album came complete with a second blank disc that basically acted as permission for the lucky fan to copy the album and pass it on to a friend. Whether this was implied support for piracy or the band simply using it as a marketing gimmick that they hoped would lead to more people being exposed to their music, the fact remains that the move encouraged people to copy for their friends instead of encouraging them to buy it for themselves. Number 6. Amanda Palmer's Email Amanda Palmer, who achieved much of her fame performing with the Dredston Dolls, has long been an advocate for file sharing and free music downloads. In an open email that ended up being reblogged, Palmer highlighted just how little she made from the record company that supposedly wanted to end piracy to protect artists. With a little ingenuity, she managed to make more in one night from Twitter and her own merchandise than she had made from her record label for sales of her 2008 album, Who Killed Amanda Palmer, despite the album hitting 77 in the US Billboard 200. Number 5. Dan Ball Sings Dear Lily Dan Ball has always been something of an oddity when it comes to the music scene. Remaining independent for his entire career, the English hip-hop artist seems to have made it his mission to support file sharing and has taken to writing open letters with a musical theme to various politicians and musicians over the course of the last few years. The first of those open letters was simply entitled Dear Lily and was aimed at pop munchkin Lily Allen, who had declared her own little war against music piracy in a blog in which she claimed file sharing was making it harder for new artists to get recognised. Bull took her to task for the claims and his little ditty became something of a hit. Perhaps even more interestingly, soon after sending the open letter he released his first album, Safe, on BitTorrent. Number 4. Machinae Supremacy released Album on Pirate Bay 
Dan Bull isn't the only artist who has used torrenting and file sharing platforms to get their music out to the masses, bypassing the major labels in the process. The Swedish heavy metal band Makine Supremacy have been singing from the same hymn sheet since their inception. The band are proud supporters of file sharing and will regularly implore their fans to download their music during their live gigs, many of which can be found on the band's own website. However, as they started to attract more attention, it seemed inevitable that albums and record labels would come calling. That didn't deter Makine Supremacy though. Since 2006, they have released five albums under a small label known as Spine Farm. Two of those albums, A View From The End Of The World and Rise Of A Digital Nation, were also made available on the Swedish torrenting site Pirate Bay. Number 3, System of a Down release Steal This Album System of a Down's music has always had something of an anti-authority air to it, so it's probably no surprise that the band is happy for people to download their music instead of buying it. The band commented on the issue when unfinished versions of tracks made during the Toxicity sessions made their way onto the internet in the early 2000s under the fan-made name of Toxicity 2. Instead of losing their minds over the issue and demanding that fans cease distributing the music, System of a Down instead simply let fans know that the tracks were unfinished and that they didn't care how fans got hold of the music just so long as they waited until the finished versions of the tracks were released. Number 2. MC Lars sings Download This Song It often seems to be smaller and independent artists who support digital piracy. In fact, many an independent musician will argue that record labels hold a monopoly over the music that we listen to, which is much more damaging than simply downloading a few tracks could ever be. At least that's the argument being made by nerdcore artist MC Lars in a track simply named Download This Song. In it, he samples Iggy Pop for the intro and argues against record labels, claiming that the rise of downloading is their own fault for having failed to evolve with the times, before asking the viewer to continue downloading in an effort to break their monopoly of the industry. He even manages to bring in Jarrett Reddick of Bowling for Soup fame to sing on the track. Naturally, the video is available to view on YouTube completely free of charge. Number 1. Trent Reznor Hates Record Labels Trent Reznor of Nine Inch Nails fame has never been shy about letting his contempt for record labels be known. In the past, he has blasted them for artificially inflating the price of his music in regions where he has a larger fan base, claiming that it means true fans of his music end up getting ripped off. In fact, it was a move that led Reznor to move towards digital distribution platforms for his music. Other stunts he's pulled in the past include leaving USB drives containing new songs hidden away in venues as part of a game to see if fans would pick up on what the device contained and leak the songs onto the net. Perhaps unsurprisingly, he went entirely independent following the release of Year Zero. One qualifier to these antics comes from the man himself, as he claims that it is his choice to do what he wants with his music, and he can make his choice because he is rich. Despite being a supporter of torrenting sites, he has also called for fans and record labels to respect the wishes of the individual artists in relation to the music that they create. And there you go, the 10 musicians who encouraged you to steal music. Oh, good old Pirate Bay, eh? If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, click that subscribe button. But for now, I have been Kirsten Rhea from What Culture Music, and I will see you in the next video.